So good afternoon all. Uh, a very warm welcome to all the attendees of this session. It's night now the time to introduce the speaker of the day, Dr. Lavi Raj Gupta, Executive Dean, Faculty of Technology and Sciences, Lovely Professional University. He holds a PhD in bioinformatics. He did his MTech in computer aided design and interactive graphics from IIT Kanpur and BE Honors Mechanical Engineering from MITS Gwalior. Having flair of endless learning, he has done 40 plus certifications and specializations online on IoT, augmented reality, gamification, machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence. His research interests are in the area of robotics, mechatronics, bioinformatics, Internet of Things, AI, and machine learning using TensorFlow and gamification as well. 85 plus published patents as Bagomoto, Powerless, Lift Mechanism, Sitabai, and many more. We also have with us Dr. Megha, Associate Professor, Mittal School of Business, Lovely Professional University, Project Head, Department of Planning and Administration, Division of Admissions. She specializes in organizational behavior, critical thinking, creativity and innovation, business ethics, human resource management, labor laws, security and social welfare, organizational change and development, competency mapping, interpersonal skills, empathy, counselings. These are her key traits. It would be an absolute delight to talk to her. With speeding technology, it is becoming the need of the hour to keep yourself updated with the changes in technology and how it is also creating a platform for new jobs and opportunities. A large part of these advancements is now being smoothly integrated into our day-to-day -day life. This webinar shall talk about the top tech careers and how these new age careers are changing jobs in technology. So over to you, Dr. Laviraj Gupta for the presentation. Uh, thank you, Professor Rishi. Uh, hopefully I'm audible, uh, loud and clear. Uh, and I, I also welcome Dr. Megha Mehta uh, uh, to, uh, to this uh, seminar of mine. See the basic uh, thought which I'm going to share with you for coming 20, 25 minutes is not around jobs. See, jobs would always be there with you. People will be after you to give you jobs if you're passionate about two things. If you're passionate about that, what I do is I do wholeheartedly. I do not grab things just for the heck of it. And I do it for my personal gratification. And the second most important thing, as Professor Rishi uh, mentioned, that technology is changing. By the time this seminar is going to end uh, in 20 minutes, 25 minutes, the technology out there might have changed. I'm not saying completely, but there is a new regime which people might have come up across and thrown it to the humanity to test it. You need to follow the pace, the lightning pace of change. I'll, I'll begin my dialogue and my interaction. Uh, and I, I call it as engineering. Then means in the previous uh, eras now, and what is going to happen to engineering in the future. So that, you know, uh, as an aspirant, as a student who's wanting to become an engineer, should clearly understand that how it got evolved from the Precambrian or ancient times, how it took the shape where it is standing today, and how actually it is going to translate itself to the future. And past one year has taught loads of lessons to engineers specifically. It might have taught lessons to clinicians, 
it might have taught lessons to people who are into drug designing into into process uh, modifications and all but it has taught whole load of lessons to engineers as well let's begin now see very simple thing very very simple thing that in the very ancient stages when people were to move heavy blocks be it, be it of stone be it of anything they crafted they basically you know they they crafted some some very meaningful kind of thing they crafted uh, something which is which is more preeminent which is more pertinent towards you know uh, having having something uh, called as uh, not wheel really, but they actually took a roller to roll that so that you know there is a ease you might have studied you might have studied uh, in your in your basic mechanics that yeah if the if the friction or if the surface area in contact is less the friction would be lesser but those times there were no there were no mechanics available it was just because of the common sense of people they took they took a roller they took a log beneath the the uh, the slab and then they rolled it over but you know that was that was troublesome so they created something called a sledge meaning thereby the first roller and the sledge they both are meant to reduce the area surface area come in contact while things are to be pushed or to be pulled then they came up with another mechanism of using combination of both so that the best of the sledge and the roller can be utilized and they created a sledge on roller kind of mechanism they then uh, you know impregnated or they they created serrations in the in the log it became easier then they created pegs uh, in the sledge and created rolling wheels out of it and finally they created crude bearings this is how this is how common sense comes into picture this is not this is not rocket science this is not engineering this is common sense being used to ease out the process see from roller to sledge and from sledge to sledge on roller and then to grooved uh, roller then to peg roller then to crude bearing roller it might have taken years and years to transform from roller to sledge and then sledge to roller but in today's scenario the today's era is that people do not have time to wait to translate or to to create new forms of common sense called as engineering from roller to sledge they wanted in zippy and this is what is happening see it might have taken ages and ages together to to uh, humans to roll not a not a square piece but a, a rolled ball kind of thing then they had some rollers beneath it then they created this a bullock cart kind of thing then the chariots came into picture now see the people who thought of roller the people who first thought of rolling friction being easier to handle than the sliding friction they created something called as wheel but they might have never envisioned they might have never thought that this kind of arrangement would then go into a spacecraft wheel first thing for an engineer that whenever you are solving a societal problem then do not do not just simply look to the present state of the art of things think of the futuristic solutions as well because from the roller which which people are uh, pulling this uh, pulling this you know big huge sump of uh, rock to make pyramids it took you know centuries to convert this rolling mechanism to a wheel which is fit beneath the spacecraft but the spacecraft's wheel beneath the rover or the curiosity which was sent to mars took only 6 months so this picture depicts two basic things for an engineer in making the very first thing is that how common sense gets converted into engineering for easing out the life or making things better and how much time it takes to convert to translate or to transform one form of thought to 
the most meaningful application of it. And that's nothing but engineering. So let me take you to another evolution. Uh, we all know about it, that uh, you know, measuring time started with a sundial, then people devised uh, more precise kind of mechanism using water clocks, sand clocks, then it took a shape of pendulum clocks, and then it came to wrists. The time from the sundial, huge big sundials, it came to the wrist. It took centuries, but then it just simply took 40 years to convert this wristwatch into, this is not a wristwatch, which is being shown on your screen. This is a marvel of technology. This is not just simply depicting or displaying time. It basically is capturing your body parameters. Now, this is the power of transformation. This is the power of convolution of engineering into more meaningful and most meaningful thing. From sundial to your smartwatch. But you need to understand where this smartwatch will go. Then only you will be able to visualize your aspirations for becoming a teacher. This particular smart of, smartwatch of yours would take up a shape like this. Now, from wristwatch to this smartwatch, it took maybe around 50, 55 odd years or 60 odd years. But from this smartwatch to this, wrist band which is capable of displaying the screen on your arm would will only take not less than a year or so this picture again as the earlier picture was depicting the power of translation of common sense into engineering for the benefit of the society this also shows that time taken to change in today's context is minimalistic because if you take see from uh, from wristwatch to smartwatch if you might have taken centuries two or three centuries put together then the entire essence for the humanity might have been compromised how things from the smartwatch to wristband would change and why it is changing i'll talk about it like this. Uh, this is another form of evolution that uh, where in, the, in, the, in the very, very ancient stages when, when we were actually not into bipedalism, we were into quadpedalism, uh, we developed a language, then came telephony, then came display billboards or display boards, then came television, then came computers. And finally, you know, anything and everything is in your hands. Your palm, a device which fits on your palm, has got the capability of doing anything and everything which you think of. That's the power of evolution. This evolution actually uh, had four major shifts. For engineering, there were four major shifts. The very first shift or the very first paradigmatic change happened and it is known as evolution 1.0 or industry or engineering 1.0 was pe when people started using water and steam for manufacturing. This started mechanized production. When people started beating the red hot iron, not by hammers, human, by human efforts, they used water and steam. That era was the industry 1.0, and that era was known as the mechanized production era. 1.0. The second era came when, when electricity was invented. And then they shifted the entire mechanical or production from just batch production to mass production. Then came the industry 2.0. And then very recently, it took from 1.0 to 2.0, it took maybe around three centuries or so and so forth. But from 2.0 to 3.0, when electronics came into picture, when information technology started participating in production and automating the entire process, then it became industry 3.0.
see electronics came into picture information technology supported the mechanical or civil systems so that you know they become more efficient the sensitivity of production the specificity of the production and the need of the production got automated this was 3.0 but from 3.0 to 4.0 it might have taken ages from 1.0 to 3.0 but it took only 50 years to convert 3.0 to 4.0 and 4.0 is nothing but automation and data exchange and that is the present world which we are living in the entire entire automation and data exchange the digitization of any process and every process is what we are standing here at and that is known as industry 4.0 or engineering 4.0 it is not going to stop from 3.0 to 4.0 it took just 50 years 55 odd years but from 4.0 to 5.0 it will just simply take two years or 2.5 years because people will devise newer mechanism so that the automation and digitization is taken to the next level so that there is no human intervention while they are producing anything and this all is possible because now we are working in an ecosystem which is known as cyber physical systems the devices the machines the mechanisms even your windmills even your uh, you know factories even your uh, 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 electricity transforming uh, cables or something like that they are actually connected to net and they are they are actually in a in a in a pool of grid so that the the entire system is now digitalized and is working in sync with each other so that errors are least and the human intervention wherein the tiredness comes into picture is negated completely let's see how it happened this happened because of something called as computation and connectivity see right now the computational power is available with a any device you think of a device and it will have its own capability of computing so any device anything anyone anybody is connected any service any business is connected any path any network is connected any place anywhere is connected and this gave rise to the most preeminent and most pertinent kind of ideology that you are any time and in any context you are connected and this gave rise to the most wonderful phrase of this era which is known as the internet of things see when internet of things you you are in this era you are in this era right now we all are in this era of iot now people are talking about uh, ioe internet of everything people are going to talk about internet of intelligent things and so on so forth but the basic ideology is internet of things this internet of things gave rose to smart homes now the homes are smart you might not be knowing but uh, homes around you means even your television has got a wi-fi connectivity and television is smarter enough to understand your mood and to display what kind of netflix movie or what kind of prime uh, 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 video you intend to watch smart healthcare we have seen the the opulence of it that in the past one one year you know the smart healthcare starting from applications or mobile apps which are actually keeping track of your uh, health parameters and are actually uh, populating it to the various health agencies so that you know if you are vulnerable to covid-19 they will come to know the first and they'll 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 attend you the fastest way smart highways go to any of the highway and basically you know you your your vehicle is connected with each other people are talking about smart agriculture and believe me this is going to be the new era of technology see earlier when we were talking about 1.0 or 2.0 people were more focused on machines that how to automate machines how to actually make efficient machines that they can produce better 3.0 
became the the domain wherein the emphasis was given to HMI, human machine interaction. That how a human is interacting with a machine. And 4.0 is talking about machine machine interaction, how a machine is interacting with each other. So in smart agriculture or smart highways, devices are talking. I'll I'll talk about it. Devices, they talk to each other. Right now, your mobile is talking to uh, your your mother's mobile, and you know they both are they both are coming in sync with each other. The power of engineering, you need to understand that the word smart is not going to live longer. You might think that what what word I, what, what phrase or what sentence I've used, smart is not going to live longer because people will come up with intelligent systems which are not just simply smart which are you you are in that you are in that era you are you are living in that world where data is being populated see i am speaking to you in this seminar the entire word of mine, entire speech of mine is being being recorded, is being actually kept in archive for references. People might do, might, might take it as a data and do loads of research on it. So that they can they can visualize that what kind of interaction youngsters need, how the interaction the, takes away the youngsters from one level to another level and past one year this data generation or or uh, you know unearthing of the data has multiplied by 20 times because you know covid 19 has given humanity a new approach to create data to assimilate data to aggregate data to compile data and finally to use data this is the power which an engineer, an aspiring engineer today needs to understand that you've got data of anything and everything available. You can have the data of Nike shoes. You can have the data of dustbins around you. You can have the data of water pipelines beneath your house. The engineer of today has to implement just the common sense to make things applicable and convert the common sense into engineering. That's the power of being an engineer today. So, uh, you know, when data is being populated, you need storage, you need uh, applications, you need uh, cloud, you need to understand what cloud computing is. When the data is too much in volumes, then you need to bother about the collection of the data, you need storage of the data, Visualize what that data is speaking about. You need to analyze. You need to go in for data analytics. See, these are these are the career paths which are going to going to be with you at least for coming ten years from now. But when this much amount of data is available, then there are threats with that data. People can change your data. People can steal your data. People can actually manipulate your data. So. Another domain which opens up is the cybersecurity kind of a domain. Devices are talking, as I said, the, we are we are we are living in the in the era of uh, MMI, machine machine interaction. Each device is talking to each other. Your refrigerator uh, is talking to uh, possibly uh, your washing machine uh, in a way. If you have implemented uh, those, you know, voice command kind of systems, even your teapots uh, are smart enough to talk to each other. So when uh, devices are talking to each other, uh, you need to have uh, you know data centers to capture the, those kind of data, capture and store those kind of data. You need to have fog kind of thing. The words which I'm talking about is going to be is going to be your specialization, say at LPU. Uh, uh, you you can work on artificial intelligence, which is most most common buzzword as of now. Uh, you need to impregnate, uh, impregnate intelligence into things uh, so that you know if you if you if you type anything, uh, your mobile phone is capable of handling uh, it 
before even your mind thinks about it you can talk about you know connected uh, devices connected machines connected uh, anything and everything and that comes another career opportunity and that's the blockchain which controls governs measures coordinates the entire traffic and entire movement of certain data ledgers now what is going to happen tomorrow i talked about uh, i talked about how evolution is done how how things got evolved in the simplest form from uh, a roller beneath the pyramid uh, stone to uh, a wheel beneath the uh, spacecraft uh, i talked about from sundial to actually uh, presently the smart watch uh, and what is going to happen in future so tomorrow lies to you know most important thing is tomorrow lies with the augmented reality and virtual reality kind of thing uh, if you want to visit paris uh, you do not have to physically be there in paris uh, the paris comes onto your uh, glasses and you can you can have the first hand pure experience of being there in paris that's just one thing the second thing you know uh, if you're if you're doing engineering maybe mechanical engineering uh, then if you want to if you want to open up an engine and see how it works uh, you do not have to really and actually open up the engine uh, you you have uh, augmented reality applications available with you you can see them uh, this is uh, what google has done very recently uh, they have created an ai they call it as baby ai means an artificial intelligent uh, framework which is not created by humans which is created by an ai which was created by humans so there is no human intervention in the baby ai the ai systems created their own baby uh, this is going to be the power and uh, future of tomorrow healthcare uh, dramatically paradigmatically has seen wonderful changes at least past one year you know uh, influenza which which happened uh, in 18th century it took actually uh, 70 to 80 years to develop the truthful vaccine out of it but here you know in just uh, the first trial uh, happened in maybe less than 30 days and people were there it's because just because of uh, the pace lightning pace availability of computation anywhere and everywhere connectivity so that groups they actually enjoy it together people are working lots of lots of agriculture precision agriculture and things like that and there are connected devices actually your vehicle uh, believe me if you if you purchase a vehicle wo, whatever vehicle you purchase right now uh, would have its own health monitoring procedures uh, means uh, it will come up with a fitbit kind of a device installed in it which is actually talking to the garage out there and uh, they keep track of the health of the system they can talk to each other as well uh, this is uh, now i'm going to show you three powers of uh, future uh and when i say future it's not actually 10 years down the line or 5 20 years down the line it's just a year or less than a year see this this particular graphics displays hyperloop you know and this hyperloop with will enable london to new york in just 3 hours and you know this is the power of just one thing this is the power of transdisciplinary research if you are an aspiring engineer right now then mark this word in your mind that you need to have transdisciplinary approach towards your thinking if you are into computer science then you cannot be just into computer science you need to you need to have have experience you need to have learning from all other domains and disciplines as well because you know hyperloops are not just simply created by mechanical uh, engineers there's whole load of role of civil engineers computer science electronics biotechnology ergonomics design uh, a whole lot of engineering they came together i'll give you another example of how transdisciplinary thoughts and uh, research works see this see this uh, thing you know you know what is happening is that there is a there is a basketball stadium actually or there is a basketball arena and you know what they have established is they have established a representation of actual representation of whale in an ocean now do you think so that only a computer science guys can do that no this particular thing will need 
equitable, equal participation of computer science, graphic designers, oceanologist, marinologist, geologist, and whatnot. If you are going to be an engineer, if you have thought to become an engineer, the first and the foremost thing is that you might belong to a discipline. You might belong to civil engineering or computer science, but do not restrict yourself to that discipline only. And that is where LPU gives you grand opportunities to branch out, to, to actually explore, experience other disciplines also, so that you become an engineer of tomorrow. Uh, another another example, and this is not too far off. I have experienced these kind of uh, restaurants. These restaurants would not have menu. Actually, you you click on a dish, and that dish would actually come onto your onto your plate, so that you'll have the first hand feel of it. And believe me, time is not too far off. Maybe uh, by this time next year, they will come up with the aroma also. Right now, it's just the graphical or image or video oriented pictorial representation using augmented reality, but people are working on uh, the uh, one more sense of yours, which is the smell sense. So, you know, if you want to be an engineer of tomorrow, the first thing is you should learn by doing. Try to do things. And the more you do things, you learn more. I'll give you an example. You learned cycling. You never learned cycling by going to a class, actually. Uh, there, there's a teacher, actually, who's, who's talking about in a class uh, that how to, how to drive or how to, how, to, how to ride a bicycle. You learned it by doing. And that's the best practice. You know, learning by doing, the best example is your mobile phone. Nokia, Samsung, or Motorola, or maybe uh, any, any of the vendors, they didn't give you uh, lectures or classes. They don't let you attend uh, the quizzes or tests. You learned it by doing. And that's the power of an engineer of tomorrow. Projects are the key. And once you are at LPU, projects, 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 and projects would be there. Because projects, they, they basically assist, they support, and they, they, they basically endorse learning by doing. As I said, make from today onwards, make this transdisciplinary work as your lifestyle. Even if you are sitting in a rickshaw, think of, uh, you know, think of how, how this rickshaw puller's life can be made easy. If you are, if you are sitting uh, maybe uh, in an aircraft, think of how, how you can actually reduce the uh, fuel consumption, how you can actually increase the uh, number of people traveling in, in that. That's common sense of transdisciplinary nature getting converted into engineering of tomorrow by the engineers of tomorrow. We'll let you, uh, meet, uh, LPU will let you participate in loads of international events because uh, when, you, when you participate in loads of international events, you learn by doing, you do projects there, and there you really showcase and understand what transdisciplinary approach means. You're going to build the strong digital presence because in times to come, maybe times are not far by that companies would not, uh, you know, hire people like that. Uh, they'll have a chatbot and that chatbot or web bot would go to the entire uh, LinkedIn or maybe any other such more wonderful uh, platform which would evolve. It will go there and identify people, select, take, take their interview on their own and then give them the offer letter without human or less amount of human intervention. So let's co-create the magic. We ensure that whatsoever I've talked about, the transdisciplinary approach, common sense getting converted into, uh, into meaningful, societal, eco-friendly, sustainable uh, applications. The courses here at LPU, the, the labs here at LPU, the projects which you do here at LPU, the kind of participation you do in the uh, inter-school, intra-school, and international events would surely prepare you to be the engineer of tomorrow. So let's follow the credo, let's follow the punchline, and let's start thinking big.
because if you're thinking big, then only you can dream big. And if you're dreaming big, then only you can achieve big. I wish you all the very best. And now the house is open for any kind of question answer. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Laviraj Gupta, for such an insightful presentation. So I have a few of the questions in front of me from all the attendees. So before that, uh, I would like to thank you for starting with the invention of the wheel, enlightening us with the revolution to 4.0, cyber physical systems, smart highways, smart homes, devices, and even smart agriculture, and also unearthing of data. So it was really nice to hear you from Dr. Uh, from Dr. Laviraj Gupta. So can I take up a few of the questions, uh, sir? Sure, sure, sure. Please go ahead. So um, there is one of the basic questions uh, from uh, Moin. Moin wants to know that if we are participating in some of the international events, uh, do we have the opportunity to go to some other countries as well? Uh, see, international events always uh, want participation. And uh, once you actually clear their tier one, tier two kind of thing, you'll have to actually go and present. If it's if it's actually uh, ASME's uh, iShow or if it is Intel's mind game or uh, you'll have to go to Bay Area to present it uh, in front of them. You'll have to go, you'll have to be there in California or if it's a Brazil event, if it's a... Uh, so this not just simply gives you an opportunity. See, uh, come what may, come what may, Olympics will never happen online. We all need to understand that. If you're participating in an Olympic, you'll have to actually be present in Japan at the arena. And that's that's the ideology behind these international events as well. Uh, I hope, Moin, you are well answered by Dr. Laviraj. And um, one more question coming up from Vanisha. Vanisha um, so wants to know how the excitement uh, in the labs can be maximized in the laboratory sessions, how in the COVID time, as we are not physically present, how, uh, what we have, uh, what LPU has a plan for that? Uh, see, uh, if it is, a simulation based uh, kind of lab which is happening then you simulate in the class but then uh, you know what we have done is we have devised certain experiments which you can do at home and for especially for first year students you know we have got uh, a philosophy of lab at home so we have devised experiments which you can establish which you can set up at your home as well I do understand uh, that uh, once this, uh, uh, see, uh, online you cannot have the hands-on experience. You cannot actually, uh, uh, you, you cannot grease your hands uh, online. But we, we have a very clear-cut, laid-down model so that, you know, uh, you, you have that fulfilling and uh, satiating experience of uh, doing things of, uh, on your own. Thank you so much, Dr. Lavriyaj Gupta. So I have one quick question uh, again for you. Uh, what type of projects are required to be handled by the students at LPU? Prabal wants to know about it. Uh, the projects, they will range. Uh, uh, they will range. Uh, the projects can be small little projects, which are, which are course specific, uh, which are intended to uh, learn the best out of that course. The projects can be a little more uh, extensive, which you are going to actually showcase in your uh, intra or inter-school hackathons or uh, prototyping uh, you know, events. It can be bigger in size if you are participating in, uh, in international events or national events like Smart India Hackathon kind of thing. But you surely are going to have a capstone project with you. That's for sure you are going to have. And that capstone project would give you the complete essence of all the engineering studies which you have done. 
it solely depends of, on an individual that how much he or she participates in the events happening and each event may result in one of the projects but as a curriculum the curriculum ensures that you at least graduate with one of the caption projects which is which is a stretchy project uh, which is uh, associated to your credits as well so do not bother about it uh, we have all uh, we have uh, already made uh, the sandbox for you so that you know you can play in that sand so prabal i hope you you have uh, got your answer in a very uh, perfect way from dr laviraj so here we have few of the queries regarding uh, the admissions and eligibility as well some of the international collaborations and uh, i hope uh, those will be answered by dr mega mehta after a short presentation she'll be able to take up uh, uh, dr mehta are you ready uh, should i transfer uh, while giving some uh, uh, rest to dr laviraj gupta yeah sure sir yeah so uh, i'm just uh, giving you the rights uh, to uh, show your screen up sure sir Uh, Professor Rishi, is my screen uh, visible to you? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Rishi, and thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gupta. It was really nice listening to you. It was uh, always a pleasure to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, before I start with uh, telling you about uh, Lovely Profession University, I would like to tell you uh, why one should choose LPU. So, um, if I start with, I would like to tell every uh, person who comes and asks questions, the very first question that a person has in his mind is, uh, what about the campus life and the exposure that a student would like to get in uh, LPU? So um, let me show you something about uh, how much exposure a student gets and what kind of a campus life a student um, at LPU, you know, acquaintance. So uh, we are the one who was, a, you know, uh, 106th Indian Science Congress. We have, uh, you know, we have hosted uh, Indian Science Congress as a private university. We got the chance to uh, get this privilege and we have wonderfully, you know, accomplished this uh, achievement where we have you know, a lot of, um, you know, scientists and a lot of, uh, you know, students have contributed in this uh, event, in this uh, co uh, conference. Uh, we have eminent uh, speakers and, uh, you know, many different people who come over here and they, uh, you know, interact with students and they have got, you know, a lot of exposure, exposures a student get to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to different eminent speakers where they come and they share their experience. And uh, these glimpses, I'm just showing it, showing to you just to get to understand that how, you know, our um, the president, late uh, Mukherjee ji, and we have many, you know, uh, inauguration sessions where students get acquaintance with a lot of uh, leaders and they showcase how, uh, you know, they can uh, come up with new ideas. And, you know, many people who have come over here even the film stars also. So there are a lot of good, vibrant and, uh, you know, evenings that are being made for students so that they can, uh, you know, get exposure. So um, when I talk about the infrastructure that the LPU has, when you will talk about LPU is um, recognized by UGC and is a member of AIU, you will find that you, uh, university campus is uh, situated, located in outskirts of Jalanda city. And it is, uh, you know, the infrastructure, when you talk about it, is always, ben always benchmarked with international standards, right? So uh, we have these uh, glimpses which will tell you that um, how uh, you know, the students get the 
you know the high uh, high tech infrastructure we have the wi-fi system we have we have the uh, you know the uh, open uh, theater where students can you know uh, sit down can do their activities they rehearse here they uh, sit down in the evening they chit chat with their friends and uh, also you will see that we have a very uh, you know modern equipped um, the auditorium which is air conditioned with good uh, sound system and a uh, lot of speakers a lot of people who when they come over here they interact students we have a lot of good capacity we have uh, you know uh, the computer labs which are um, you know people uh, uh, even the Apple, uh, you know, iMac, you will find the Mac labs, you will find the libraries, which is, uh, you know, four story library. We have we a have lot of, you know, database where students can read and can take the even e-resources also, they can download, they can use it. You will also find that there are, um, you know, we have the uh, resource center where we call it a unimall. And here we have a lot of, you know, um, facilities which are available for students where they don't have to go out and hunt for a, even a small thing you will find inside the, uh, you know, in the LPU itself. So it is something which you will find that um, not even for a small uh, things you have to go and hunt for it. You can get it inside the uh, LPU ambience. Uh, this is uh, our uni mall where you have uh, good brands over here. You will find the you know the computer shops, mobile shops. You will find all the basic um, you know convenience stores are here. You will find lovely sweets. You will find you know the pizza stores, eating joints, everything that you can find over here. You will be you can sit down. You can have all the facilities. So that is why I'm saying that it is city in sit you know itself. You don't have to go anywhere. So these are all the needs. We have gym facilities, uh, all well equipped. Uh, we have bowling, uh, you know, system here. We people can, you know, the recreational time. Students can come here. They can uh, have a good fun as well. Uh, we have a you know hospital also where the basic things and everything is intact. You will, uh, you know, even if you wanted to get your eye checked. Uh, you know, it can be done inside only. We have a, the hospital inside our university where uh, all your, you know, uh, the doctors are here. They can uh, even the psychologically also, if you wanted to talk to some counselor, they are sitting over here. So you don't have to go anywhere. So we have a good amount. You know, we have a lot of uh, facilities inside our organize in our campus. So we have the uh, you know uh, solar panel also, and uh, this is how the beautiful campus looks like. And you can see how beautiful it looks when it is different weathers. You witness different weathers. You witness different you know um, uh, the um, areas. You know at night you will find the greenery, lush green area surrounded by greenery, and uh, at night our campus looks like. A beautiful campus you can always have you can walk around you can see you can witness so we have um, when it talks about you know these sports activities we have the indoor facilities available uh, where uh, you know uh, the swimming pools are there you can always have you know all the um, students who are looking for international you know uh, championships and even the competitions are held over here the we have a very good facilities inside only in our campus shooting range we have badminton courts we have basketball and name anything you will find every facilities inside our or in our lpu so this is how when somebody talks about why should i choose lpu so my first answer to you is that the ambience that you generally get is one thing and the infrastructure supports our learning system as well so if you uh, you know if you are achiever you wanted to get you know you are having a sports scholarship or something like that you are good at, at sports you don't have to go anywhere we have all the facilities inside our uh, organization the second thing that the parents always look for is residential facilities and security and uh, i you know if you will see this the very first thing that i would like to tell you is our campus is ragging free campus and uh, we have all the facilities which helps you uh, you know we have um, 
the system which uh, you know no uh, outsiders can get inside your you know in the uh, campus we have proper security system with this you get inside we have a lot of options available in residential facilities like we have one seater two four seater and luxurious apartment as well we have both the options available you can have the air conditioned rooms as well you can also have air cooled which is a cooler and we have six girls hostels and eight boys hostels where we have 20000 plus capacity we have given a lot of food options also considering that we have a diversity in our in our uh, campus so uh, we have uh, from 28 states pan india people are coming with their different taste and varieties and uh, we have incorporated all those things right so we have food options available like standard south indian north indian and even the international students also get you know the options according to their taste so that is what we have provided in our food facilities um so if i talk about a journal uh, what what will be the um, you know how would it be costing us so if we'll say that uh, if somebody is looking for four seater air cooled so it is 65000 uh, per annum and 32000 would be costing as a our uh, you know when you talk about the food facilities and all we have um, you know the residential facilities uh, we do have certain you know uh, amenities also which helps to augment our uh, you know system that is uh, banks are available inside you don't have to go anywhere your banks are we have uh, SBI bank we have Punjab National Bank we have Oriental Bank we have ICICI bank so a lot of banks are here ATMs are there we have a good Wi-Fi system we have post office also and we have gymnasium we have hospital we have convenience stores so uh, so very basic thing which i have uh, right now has explained to you is uh, first thing is about the infrastructure and the campus and the kind of uh, you know the weekends if i wanted to spend the recreational activities we have engagement activities which will help a student to you know uh, engage themselves so this is one thing now i'll get back to uh, the programs offered as uh, i am just going to talk about the programs in engineering we have diploma in which you can choose computer science civil uh, electronics and communications electrical and mechanical we have uh, you know if i talk about the eligibility one should always have 50 percent in 10th with science mathematics and english or equivalent so this is for all branches which i talked about in diploma and uh, now the you are looking for some btech programs we offered in these streams as you can see and uh, uh, wherever you have an incline inclination towards any of the streams you can always you know talk to us anytime we have a counselor sitting over here online also we are available you can call us as well to understand in which stream whatever the uh, you know um, the benefits or what are the courses the outcome of the courses you can always talk to us these are the uh, specializations i would also like to uh, highlight that we have some certain programs which tie up with some of the industries as well now if i talk about in btech computer science and engineering we have uh, tied up with upgrad where we are uh, you know the full stack development and uh, ml uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence this is what we are offering with uh, upgrad also and we are also offering it as a specialization in our, in our program too so their faculty uh, this is a collaboration with them where the faculty comes and they uh, you know uh, teach our students and they have a different uh, you know all tire programs we also offer and the programs that we are offering so these are the specialization which you can always have uh, understanding later on and whenever you have any queries you can always ask to our counselors now what is the eligibility for these branches we look for above 60 percent you know at least you should have 60 percent in your 10 plus 2 with physics mathematics and english or equivalent plus lpu nest exam we look for that uh, if you qualify our lpu nest exam this is exam which is you uh, which is an entrance test and also which helps you to get the scholarship as well and in biotech biomedical and food technology the same goes with 60 percent but with the uh, we have additional biology right or equivalent and also you have to qualify our lpu nest exam uh, these are the programs which are offered 
uh, in mtech where if somebody is looking for mtech program we have these are the uh, in areas where you can always uh, look for your mtech program and for this we the eligibility for the program is 60 percent in bachelors of relevant domain and equivalent or lpunest or gate so this is how we are looking for now i'll quickly move over to fee and scholarship so that people who are more interested in knowing about this program i would like to uh, you know uh, emphasize on this thing that we are the largest you know provide we give largest scholarship schemes to our students so that they we believe in um, you know that um, our mission is to provide ed, you know education assess an opportunity to all students so we believe students from all economical develop you know background uh, should have an opportunity to attend the university so these are some statistics which will just going to help you to understand that how we are look you know giving scholarships to students we have a total scholarship we have given is 500 crores and even if somebody is you know wants to study we don't only benefit students who are going to study in lpu we also uh, if you are aspiring to go to iits or some nits or some other other in premium institutions we also help them by providing a scholarship to them as well by qualifying lpu next we it is a is a program called study grant so there also a student can always you know uh, we grant them some scholarship so that they can uh, it's just that to help them to promote them to make them go ahead with their dreams so we we are just helping in that case uh, when I talk about the program fee, it is in BTEC in all branches, it is 1,20,000. But then this is just, you know, uh, if a student is capable and is, um, you know, is aspiring to become a good engineer and uh, with this capacity, with his, you know, with his competencies, he can, uh, you know, get a lot of scholarship also based on qualifying LPNEST or if he gets marks uh, in uh, in 10 plus 2 it's between 80 to 89.99 percent he gets you know 30 percent scholarship right so this is how i have bifurcated you can always see that and uh, if you are having a 90 to 94.99 percent in plus 2 or you get the lpu nest in cutoff 2 you get you know 40 percent scholarship and when once you have been in more than 95 percent and you come into the category of lp nest uh, cut of one so you get 50 percent scholarship but for csc program we have the another scholarship you know um, uh, cutoffs that is 20 25 and 30. this you know this is how we have bifurcated you can uh, for more understanding you can log into our website and www.lpu.in and can see all the you know scholarship uh, programs that we have and understand the bifurcation as well uh, other than lpu nest we also entertain students and scholarships like uh, national level test j mains or uh, you know gate and sports and cultural events do have a scholarship we give scholarship on the basis of extracurricular activities. Defense personnel and their wards can also get the scholarship, and uh, parentless and disabled students can also can get avail the uh, scholarship. So these are uh, different program, uh, different scholarship and grants that the LPU is providing to students, so that they can uh, they can you know uh, there should not be any barrier in their their career. The admission process for BTEC student is that you have to just log into our website, uh, how to apply, just sign up and uh, apply for LPU Nest first of all, scholarship test and uh, book for the exam slot and, uh, and then you appear, wait for the result and seat allotment. We have an online counseling which is going to be there. Uh, this is how you can visit to our LPU. Right, so www.lpu.in is our website where you can always log in and can find all the necessary information, relevant information related to the program. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can always call us on toll free number and you can also email to us at admissions at the rate lpu.co.in. So uh, thank you, Dr. Mega, for a very informative session uh, regarding the fee structure, the infrastructure, as well as the scholarship, a part of that. So I hope all the queries regarding the um, uh, eligibility and all were 
uh, thoroughly discussed in the presentation and um, due to dearth of time i won't be able to take up many questions but yes um, uh, the prominence are coming from these uh, dr laviraj go uh, can i sir yeah, you can please please yeah um uh, there is a question from bashu bonia naresh he wants to know that in this pandem pandemic time uh, what changes the placement companies have uh, made in their hiring process mm, so that they can prepare said, well for that yeah yeah as i said uh, that uh, uh, what they have done is they have taken up the initial screening process and they have redesigned the initial screening process they have made gamified systems because uh, earlier they were more focusing on uh, just simply you know uh logic quants and aptitude kind of thing but now what they have done is they have created gamified systems so they are not going to give you questions directly they'll actually give you, give you a situation uh that becomes more meaningful the interviews they are conducted see one very important thing nowadays they are they are wanting you to submit your video resume that's very important and as i said in my presentation that you need to build your digital presence that's more important than anything because if you are into computer science then your github account or your bitbucket account would speak more than anything else for you if you are into mechanical engineering and you have got a linkedin profile or uh, a profile on asme american society of mechanical engineers which talks about your projects and which talks about your participation in their i show competition then uh, by default the process for you would be different than for a normal conventional student but yeah there is a change change uh, uh, the process is more uh, digitalized it's more online but the fervor has not changed thank you so much uh, dr laviraj um thank you so much uh, dr mega so finally um we are going to so i'm sure uh, the attendees gained a valuable insight into the university and career options and we hope uh, it was a positive experience for you as well the information you shared was very very enlightening during this exclusive webinar on engineering as career attendees heard from dr laviraj gupta and dr meeda as on how you can have a successful career in this field hopefully you found this webinar to be valuable and will be able to leverage the information provided in this webinar to help take a better decision regarding your admissions i am obliged and once again thankful to dr laviraj gupta and dr meeka for attending and strengthening this platform thank you so much sir we hope to plan few of the seminars for you again thank you so much thank you thank you everybody and please keep uh, please be safe thank you thank you sir